Hello, homies, and a very warm welcome to another incredible installment with Eileen Noman. I'm so excited that we get to have a chat again. Today, we have the lovely Sharon Ralston, one of the homeopaths on my team, joining us as well. Um, Eileen, we've had so much incredible feedback already from the past three episodes that we've done with you. We've got this one, and I think there's another one at least, or another one or two in the bank as well that we're going to be doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much and welcome. Well, thank you. It's good to be back. I almost feel like this is my second home. I see you every week, <laughs> which is nice. It's I the, mean, hey, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> it's such a privilege. Thank you so much. I'm not going to take any up any further of your time. You've got another um, PowerPoint here for us. So those listening yes. on Rumble and YouTube can check out the PowerPoint, but you're welcome to obviously just listen in on the podcast as well. Eileen, the floor is yours. Okay, well, there is a lot in this one. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I liken um, what we're doing is uh, kind of like three-dimensional chess. Uh, in in one way, we're we're looking at the human in three D, and some people know something about anatomy, and certainly homeopaths know a lot. Uh, some know more than others, but at least you know the framework. And then on top of that, I walk in here and say, well, you know, there's there's an etheric template that is is gold colored and it starts out the crown chakra up here. And and it's the exact duplicate of the body, but it, it has to do with all of the anatomical uh, inner things beneath the skin, like, uh, you know, your nervous system, your digestive system, and so on and so forth, and all your organs and all your endocrine glands. And But you can't see it. And nobody, unless you're a metaphysician uh, or you, and or you are clairvoyant, uh, can see that, that golden shimmering uh, outline of that template of our body, but it's like looking through it, okay? And, and you can see the aura, the egg shape energy around you also. Um, and I was just thinking today that, you know, we're doing a crash course quite literally. I mean, it took me 18 years to learn all of this stuff thanks to my parents. Uh, and they were both clairvoyant and, and they had been schooled and trained like they were training me up. And so I had 18 years to suck this up. And, and, I'm, and, and as you well know, I've been talking to you about this, Eugenie, about everybody needs to understand this because all of our health starts out here and then comes in here. Whatever is happening out here, uh, which goes back to losing pieces or when we get wounded, when we get shock and trauma, it starts out here where we can't see it, but it, it, continues to bleed down through the, the layers, through the, the fields, and into a particular chakra uh, where the wounding took place. And then the chakra is blown, or the chakra, which is a, a round circle, it looks like a funnel, okay? There's a funnel on the front and the back, like the heart chakra, the throat chakra, you got the brow chakra, the crown chakra, and so on. And no one realizes that our true health or lack of health actually starts out there and comes in. And again, the, the bottom line, the foundation is, is that it's shock and trauma that, that puts us in, in these out of balance uh, ways, but it takes a while to kind of filter down. And so I'm, I'm trying to make this simple, but to me, it's like we are literally doing three dimensional chess in 3d and 4d at the same time. So uh, what I want to tell the people who are listening is don't feel bad if if it's just overwhelming to you, because this takes some time to really go through it and, and to digest it. And if you don't have any anatomy or physiology, there's a really fun book. And I, and I love this book. It's called The Anatomy Coloring Book. Uh, it was done by a, a U.S. artist. And it is one of the best books in the world for people who, who haven't sunk their teeth into anything that's anatomical, because everything we're going to talk about as far as the chakra goes and, um, you know, the, the different layers and how they interact with one another uh, to create whether we're healthy or not healthy or we have issues over here or over here. If they could just get that coloring book and get some 
colored pencils or crayons. I don't care. It's fun. Uh, I used it when I was going through my EMT training because they really put you through through a lot of uh, of that. So just sit back and do what you can. Now, uh, Eugenie, you got three handouts of mine, right? That that we're going to give away free. Everything's free, um, and it's to help the people <laughs> do the stepping stones on this in your own time and and when you're quiet. And the the one that's really important is a. Uh, I think you're going to turn it into a PDF, right, Eugenie? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'll just quickly pipe in there as well. So if you go to eugeniekruger.com forward slash Eileen, E-I-L-E-E-N, that's Eileen's corner. We'll put all her documents there. But there is also her own website, walkingtheland.net, and eventually she'll get all of her own goodies on there as well. So we just kind of um, have a little storing house on our website just in the meantime while her IT is getting all the things on there. Just And also so you have, you know, a, a couple of different places. She's got her YouTube channel as well, so make sure that you go there as well. So we're just making sure that we're spreading the love around and making sure – nice. <laughs> easy for everyone to find Eileen and her work. Really? Well, Eugenie, you're kind of hard to find too. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> anyway, um, this, I, I have a, a lovely uh, niece. She is a graphic artist and she's the one that created this beautiful um, design of, of a person with an aura. And on the left-hand side, uh, there are names like etheric body, astral body, lower mental body, upper mental body, causal body. And then on the right, you have all of the chakras. And uh, don't don't get misled. Just we'll take this a step at a time. But it's, it's going to uh, tell you a lot about yourself. And you may find yourself um, in some of the descriptions going, gee, this is just like me. You know, or, oh, man, I used to go through that. I'm not like that now, but I used to be that way. And it's like going through different chakras uh, that have been, uh, I'm going to say damaged, but they can be slowed down. They're they're whirling all the time at a certain vibrational frequency. And um, I'm going to talk a lot more about chakras next week because people need to understand this. And uh, it, because it is our our bottom line with our health and with how how well we get through this lifetime or not. So they're really, really important. But I'm going to touch upon them this week. But we're really going to go in depth and uh, slower <laughs> than this one. This one's going to be Mach 3 with its hair on fire. So the first thing you get to laugh at, that I always like uh, doing funny things. This is my um, my idea that I drew this, okay? This is my fault. Anybody want to laugh at it, go right ahead. Uh, I drew it because... I was teaching this a long time ago to my shamanic uh, facilitators uh, who were my students. And I just thought, gee, I got to do something. And so this is what I came up with. It's not the world's best, but it will do. Uh, what I basically want you to kind of hold on to tonight is, is that we have uh, chakras. We have seven. We actually have nine, but we're only going to deal with the seven. Uh, because they're in the body and they're they're connected with our organs in our endocrine system. And that's, again, we're talking health here. Um, and so I needed to show something here. And I'm going to create a really nice do-it-yourself kind of graphic for next week. And everybody will probably howl at that one. But you'll really understand it and you won't forget it. Um, and if you put your hand over a chakra, all right, like your heart chakra, remember we have two two small little substation electromagnetic chakras right here, and you you can literally feel them. You can feel either the hot or cold, or if it bumps up because it's swollen and there's inflammation. Uh, so this is my idea. And I just basically said the electromagnetic system that surrounds our physical body is composed of parts. And I says, it's just like a car engine. It too has parts uh, that must work in unison so that the engine turns over and starts. And I said, chakras are shaped like a funnel, you know, like your mom, when she, she makes, you know, uh, bakes or cooks, she uses a funnel. That's the type of funnel we're talking about. It's very, very simple and straightforward. Um, but they are on our front and on our back. And that's why this particular drawing, I know my niece is going, oh my God, she didn't do that. Did she, did she really put that out there? <laughs> Hers are so much nicer, but 
you know, you get the idea. That's all I want you to get tonight. Um, the front chakras symbolize our desire. Now, desire is, you've got to watch out for desire because, okay, uh, I really desire some chocolate. Well, too much chocolate is going to make you fat, okay? Or it's going to give you diabetes or something like that. So you got to watch what desire is. And your will is where you actually, from an incarnation standpoint, when you made your plan to come in here this lifetime to be who and what you are and what you're doing, um, is is really the 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 engine that should be running everything. But our desire gets in our way, and we aren't always, you know, really smart about it. You know, and I do love chocolates, and I just have to hide them, and my husband finds them, and then he eats them all, and then there's none around. So. <laughs> I'm going to tattletale on him. It's his fault. <laughs> his desire ran away with him. Anyway, um, each of these chakras uh, runs a specific color, which is a specific frequency and or a vibration. And each has a specific duty in our aura. And that in turn feeds our and sustains our physical body. Um, I said, we would not be alive if we didn't have this egg-shaped nine-layer aura around us, nor would we exist without our funnel-shaped looking chakras, which pull in a, a specific kind of pranic or prana, P-R-A-N-A, -A, energy into each of them because it feeds our physical bodies 24 hours a day nonstop. And I said, all of this is invisible unless you're clairvoyant. And I said, just because you can't see it with your two physical eyes doesn't mean it doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, so this is one that my niece did. You can tell how much nicer it looks. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the first field just very generally. I'm not getting in depth. Um, the handout that I am giving you it really starts uh, sinking your teeth into it, but we're going to be going more into that in later lessons. And I said uh, in lesson one, I introduced you to the first auric field or layer, and it was called the etheric uh, field. And we always refer to it as the etheric. Uh, it is a light gray or a light blue color that surrounds our physical body like a tight glove. And that layer is usually around three inches thick. And it is connected to our root chakra, which is red. It runs red energy. Okay, so uh, the second field, um, or excuse me, lesson two, I introduced you to the first auric field layer, and it's called the astral body or the astral field. Um, there's different names for all of these, and I just I am going to try and just keep it simple even though I understand that different religions have different names for all these chakras, we're not going to get into that mess. There's, there's just no way I'm going to go there. So we're just going to make this simple. I said it contains all the colors of the rainbow. It is our emotional body. If you don't understand, or if you don't remember anything else about it, it's where uh, we put our tears and where we put our happiness. It's everything. And the layer is usually three to four inches thick. And I said it is connected to our sacral or navel chakra, and it's an orange color, which my niece has made the orange color. <laughs> okay, so tonight we're going to talk about chakras three through seven. And I said in lesson three, uh, I'm going to introduce these fields. And I'm going to, I had to have some kind of name for all of these, understanding that every religion has a different name for them, but we're still talking the same thing. We have the same fields. So I've named them here, uh, but again, I'm just going to make it really, really simple. And what I tried to show, like, for instance, in the third field, which is they call it the lower mental field. And don't think that it, it means that people are stupid, okay? Because when you say mental and you say lower, you think that, you know, no, that has nothing to do with anything. Metaphysics doesn't doesn't look at things that way at all. That's why I don't like these names. They, they build pictures in people's minds that we really don't need. But the lower mental body is, is a light yellow color, and it's the third layer out from the physical body. The upper middle body, okay, um, is the solar plexus, and it's it's rather gold colored. It's it's not yellow; it's gold, and we had kind of a hard time trying to make gold out of that, but we didn't succeed. But you you'll believe me. 
And the causal body, um, or excuse me, we're we're going to to leave the the throat and the heart for a little later. But the causal body, I just want to kind of show you that the different fields as they go out. It's just a drawing. It's just to kind of get you used to to understanding that those layers are there, and they're not two dimensional. They're they're constantly moving around us very slowly, and and so you can see all kinds of colors like daffodil clouds moving around and, and different colors coming and going. Uh, it, it's in a constant movement kind of thing. So this 2D d doesn't really do it great, but it gets you the idea. So I said our aura consists of nine fields or layers of energy, and they create this egg-shaped protective electromagnetic energy field around us. And I said every living thing has an aura. And I have so many people go, but, 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 okay, because... Well, I thought only humans had it. No, everything that's living, all right, has an aura. And um, that's what keeps them alive. Stop and think about this. I mean, you know, uh, man is not the uh, the top of the pecking order. Trust me, like they think they are. They're not. So um, this is an invisible energy. And there is a wonderful book. If you want to get into chakras and really sink your teeth into some of the best uh, information I have ever seen written by anybody. Uh, Carolyn Mace is a medical intuitive. She's clairvoyant. Uh, I've taken some of her, her, I took a five day course from her in San Jose, California. And uh, she's an incredible being. And she knows those chakras inside and out. And it's the best 21st century or 20th century that I have ever uh, had someone talk about the chakras like she does. So um, if, again, if, if it starts to interest you, that's the only book I want you to buy. Don't buy any other one, but this one. And, uh, and you will not be sorry. Okay. So <laughs> here's the lower mental body. Okay. This, this is, uh, this is the, uh, what we call the solar plexus because it runs the yellow color. Uh, just kind of forget the lower mental body. Just look at solar plexus chakra and we'll be fine. Um, and I said that uh, this is this is our everyday mind. It symbolizes the left side of our brain where thought, memory, remembering the past and the present uh, is using the 3D world. If we didn't have this, we could not operate in this third dimension. So it's a very, very important part of what keeps us going on a daily basis. And uh, and I said, but it goes deeper than that. Uh, and I said, I've always wondered why, why they ever use lower. And I kind of explained that. So uh, what you do need to know just anatomically, just passing by right now, is, is that it the solar plexus rules the stomach region and the chakra is actually where the stomach is at. Uh, and it rules all of the digestive phase, uh, whether it is down, uh, you know, it, it meets with the navel chakra, which is the second chakra, which is orange. Uh, it, it takes care of our intestines and our large intestine and our colon. Uh, so anything to do with digestion, whether it's heartburn or stomach ulcers or just, you know, um, picky eaters, that type of thing, uh, this this is where ground zero is at. And I said, um, it also, uh, be sure that, you know, you don't look at lower as being stupid or um, not quite up to par uh, brain-wise, this has nothing to do with it. Although the vagus nerve is part of the solar plexus. And let me tell you, you want to read some stuff up on the vagus nerve and how important that is? Oh, my God. So I can't talk about it tonight, but it's there. Okay, so the first seven fields of the aura are connected to a specific set of chakras. And chakras um, in the Hindu religion is called a wheel of light. And they are light. They they do stand out. And when you feel them, you can actually feel the vibration of, of what they're spinning. And uh, as I said before, I think that it if you're from the equator going to the northern hemisphere up to the North Pole, the chakras spin in a clockwise direction. 
but from the equator down to the South Pole, it is counterclockwise. And and if they and the way we do that, you can really tell very easily, and I can't get into it tonight, but I can kind of drop some seeds into your uh, your vicinity. If you know what a pendulum is, you can literally take a pendulum and hold it. Do you have one, Eugenie? I see you reaching for something. <laughs> oh, let's do a show and tell. I love that. <laughs> what, you got it in your purse? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Sorry, it's I just had myself on, on on mute while I was looking for it. So okay, cool. right. Okay, so the way that that I would always train my my shamans is is I would show them how to use the pendulum, and to show them where their chakras were at, and to hold it at a certain uh, so many inches away, and you know it's either going to spin one way or the other, mm. or if it doesn't spin at all, it means that that chakra is closed down. Or uh, worse, there's etheric dross in it and it stopped it from spinning, which is a very bad sign. And you're going to have some health issues there. Mm -hmm. That's all I could say. So we, we use the pendulum because most people are not clairvoyant and can't see the spinning and they can't look into it and see what's going on and whether it's spinning the correct way or not. And the easiest thing is to use a pendulum. So everybody who, who really wants to get into this, buy a pendulum. Okay. Um, so I said that... Uh, oh, sorry. I, so, sorry. Sorry, Eileen. I keep unmuting myself and then forgetting you can't hear me. <laughs> Just to make the editing easier. But with... So we're here in the Southern Hemisphere. So you're saying we're going uh, anti-clockwise. But is that as I'm looking outwards, it's going um, anti-clockwise? Or is that if you're viewing... If you're viewing the person from the outside, that it's sorry, that's a really like, no. I mean, it literally, if you if you hold a pendulum over your heart chakra or yeah. your solar plexus, okay, and you hold it about three inches above it and just hold it real quiet, it's going to start moving counterclockwise because you're in you're in the southern uh, hemisphere okay but but the chakras itself though so as so i'm trying to kind of visualize it so you're saying it's this funnel that's kind of going out but then it also goes round right so is that no 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 the chakra is a funnel and it stays right where uh it, it stays very close to the body mm. okay and that's why i say uh put your pendulum about three to four inches above your body, above that chakra. Okay. And the, the chakra's right there. Mm. Okay. It they they are all in a line. They don't move around. Okay. Are Unless they spinning at all? Pardon? They, so that they're spinning though, or is it uh, I'm getting myself confused here. Yeah, okay. Let's 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 say this about chakras. Um in, in the Southern Hemisphere, they're counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. In the Northern, they are clockwise. If your chakra happens to be spinning uh, clockwise, this isn't good because it's not supposed to be doing that. It's supposed to be going the other way. Okay. So that shows that there's an issue. Or it stopped working, and that's not good either. So this is why you want that pendulum. And a, a lot of times people with jet lag, when they go from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere, which I've done many times, oh, my God, your your poor chakra fields just get, it, it's, a, it's a shock to them, okay, because they're in a very different energy pattern in the Southern hemisphere rather than the Northern. And that's, that's all, that's all I'm going there tonight. Okay. okay. We, we can always do that. People could come over to, uh, you know, to your YouTube place or mine and ask me questions and I'll be happy to try and answer them. But we're getting into some deep weeds here and I don't want to go there right now because people have enough weeds to go through tonight. <laughs> okay. Sounds great. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. I'll put myself back on mute now. <laughs> Oh, no, no. I, I love questions. And just some of them, it's going to take maybe 15, 20 minutes to ser get seriously into the uh, intricacies of it. And that's boring if, if you don't understand how they're connected nice. in the first place and what they can do mm. for you. Mm. So um, anyway, getting back to this, eventually the pranic food that goes into the funnel, which is your chakra, which doesn't move, it's, it's, it's in a fixed place. On the template, it has a little tube uh, at the end of the funnel, and it's attached to the spinal column of the template, which is created by our crown chakra aura. 
out here, okay? Our auras never move except to move around us, okay? The chakras always stay in place. They, they can't run all over the place and say, catch me if you can. They, they stay with a specific organ, front and back, and that's it. And, and they are all on that etheric template that was created by the crown chakra layer, okay? And that's that's where it's held, and it it is attached to with the um, with where the funnel gets narrowed. It it goes in to the spinal column of the the template, and that and then it goes to a specific endocrine gland in our physical body, and there is a transmutation that takes place which is phenomenal. It goes from prana, which is molecules and atoms. And once it goes into, thanks to the chakra, into that specific endocrine gland, it transmutes in, into physicality and it becomes a hormone. And believe me, hormones run our, our whole entire body. There's, there's, there's no no jokes about this. Okay. And that's how we get fed. That's how our, our, our physical body gets fed is by these chakras. So they are the absolute, uh, front soldiers, if you will, of health or lack of health in our bodies. So anyway, in this one, uh, the solar plexus, which is, you know, the stomach digestive area front and back, uh, the chakras deal with the yellow vibrational field of energy. And it is also uh, being thought of as mental or mind energy when you think about the color yellow. Um, it, but, you know, yellow has a lot of other things. You think about yellow as like sunlight. Sunlight is yellow also. And, and it's beautiful. And so it's, it's more than just mental mind. And I said clairvoyantly, there's a prominent yellow crescent shape, literally over the head of everyone. You can see it. It's it's like a, a, a curved that that starts about right where your ears are and it comes up across your head. And that that is your mental field. And and you can see it, you know, if you can start seeing the etheric with your two eyes, I know a lot of people who can with their two eyes see that yellow half a halo. Okay, it's not a halo around your head. Don't let's not, you know. That that has now no, it's it's like half uh of a circle, and it's just right here. And the thing is, is that if it's very faded out, it means that people really aren't using their mind that much. It doesn't mean they're stupid, so don't go there. But somebody who is who has let's say a very mental job, like let's say somebody that's not in IT and computers, they're they're using their minds to the ultimate. All right, or mathematicians who are writing formulas. Um, then their field, that particular field gets very, very almost golden looking. And it just really stands out very prominently, but it's not a halo. So just get that out of your mind. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's, it's job is just to communicate with one another in the third dimensional world. Okay. This is how we get along. I said, it rules the brain functions as well. And I says, it, this field is also keen on mathematics. Anything that's linear, such as time, measurement, science in general, or sacred geometry, because that too involves the math formula. So that's all concerned with that solar plexus chakra. And so it's more than digestion. Uh, but it's also digestion, if you want to look at it symbolically, of, of linear thinking in any way, shape, or form too. Okay, so the next one uh, is the heart chakra. You can call it the heart field. Uh, it's just above the the stomach, and it's right here uh, in the center of your chest. The heart is uh, provides a counterweight to the mind, and Albert Einstein called the mind the servant uh, to the heart. Uh, that was, in his opinion, primary. He referred to our heart as the gift. And that tells you that I wish all humans would, would put their heart first instead of uh, thinking it. Thinking has no emotion. Heart has the emotion. So the heart is located in the central part of our body. 
not only a physical bridge uh, of the emotional energy, but also it, it is the opening gate to our spiritual orientation. Uh, you can't be spiritual and make it all a head thing or a mental thing. Uh, part of being spiritual is moving and making your heart primary, making your mind secondary. Uh, I always say that the lower mind or the everyday mind is good for the grocery list. But if you want to really move up the ladder, spiritually speaking, and become a better human being, then you are listening, first of all, to your intuition, because that is where intuition comes from, is our heart. And if you start listening to that, it'll never lead you wrong. It really won't. It'll save your life, too. And I can I can tell you stories that will raise hair on your head. Uh, because I listen to my my heart first. You know, I don't care what somebody outside of me is telling me. I know better. And so the heart sits uh, above the lower three mind chakras, which is the root and the sacral or the navel chakra and the solar plexus chakra. Uh, metaphysicians consider these three to be the mind that that people use in 3D in their incarnation. But the heart is like a gateway that gives them some opportunity to do something else if that's what they want to do. And that is, is to start feeling their emotions, getting involved with them, and finding out that emotions can just, you know, run over the mental or the mental can override the emotional. It just depends upon the, the soul and the incarnation they're in. And what I like, uh, I, I found this wonderful graphic uh, that shows the heart and, and the, then in the center of it shows the brain. And that that is what you want to always think about, all right? And I have a, a very quick little thing to tell you that I, I have taught my um, shamanic students uh, for the last 30, 40 years is you know, even women get more mental than they do emotional, okay? And we shut down emotionally for a lot of reasons, and men and women. And plus we have a society that tells men that they can't cry and that they can't be emotional and they can't feel and they can't talk about the things that really ought to be talked about. Um, and I had uh, have had a lot of my, my uh, students who are highly intelligent. I mean, you know, just incredible people, um, very smart, far smarter than me, believe me. Uh, I don't have any PhDs. I don't have a BA. I don't have an MA. I have nothing. <laughs> so there you go. But um, they all started out, and you could see that every time I would say something that, that had an emotional uh, resonance to it, that should have been taken into consideration with what I was talking about that you would immediately see all the energy and you'd see their little yellow mental halo just light up like a neon light. Okay. That's why I knew that they were in their head and they weren't in their heart. You can't do the job as a shaman in your head. It's impossible because it, it is a service path of compassion and that means you're not thinking about it. You're feeling everything about it. And, and you, you have to love the, the person who was uh, injured by the perpetrator, but you also have to love the perpetrator with as much love as you love that victim. And that, that is a jawbreaker. I just dare anybody to try that. You just stop and think about it for a minute. I have five years with those women and three men who the easiest way I found to break that energy, to stop the mental from always taking over on the emotional because it served them so well, except they want to be a shaman and that doesn't serve them at all. So they've got to throw the blueprint out and start all over. And so what I taught them, and this works for everybody is, is to just, you know, uh, ground yourself first. All right. Grounding is important or it's not going to work. So you have to ground yourself. And then you close your eyes, take three deep breaths in your nose, down in your belly, let it out your mouth gently. Okay, three times. All right. And your hands are sitting on your, your thighs. All right. You haven't got crossed hands and you haven't got crossed legs. Leave them straight. Okay. 
And then visualize in your brow here, you see your head slowly moving down into your heart and, and going total, the head totally goes into the heart and the heart encloses over the head. And just stop and feel that. That's a big difference. Don't believe me? Go try it. And it's the first step in, in quieting the mind and this goes into meditation, too. I mean, the TM people, they'll tell you, you have to have a quiet mind. Well, this is how you quiet it. Put it into the arms and the love of your heart and love it for what it is. It's trying so hard. I mean, you, you just, <laughs> it just tries to outdo itself. And hold it and just stay there and feel it for about maybe a minute. And then, all right. Do your three breaths in and out, and then just open your eyes. The head will stand to heart, but I'm sure with really heavy mental people that that, heart's, that head's going to start wanting to come up again, just like the astral body likes to come out of your feet and go up your body, okay, and, and escape because there's too many emotions. So, But the head heart is one of the most important things you can do as a human being, and you don't have to be a shaman to do this either, but you do it for yourself. And, and you start finding, my people found, it would take about three months for them, sometimes six months, depending on how, how heavy the mental activity was. You don't want to think it, you want to feel it. And at that time, their lives began to change very markedly and in some very soft, kindly, loving ways that they never before had any um, experience with. And so it took them several years, you know, of doing that daily. The, you know, when you get up, go potty. Uh, first thing you do is sit down, ground yourself, do, do the head heart, and you're ready for the day. Okay as a better human being, because you've, you've involved your heart, you've involved, you know, the kindness, your generosity, a smile for somebody, uh, or saying a, a kind word or saying, Hey, I really like that scarf you're wearing. It's really beautiful on you. It's not a lie. It's just going out of your way to, to help someone else who's probably having a hell of a bad day and they're struggling just like you are. And when you start understanding everybody's struggling, you're not going to do any judgments. And being a shaman, you can't do a judgment at all. So, I mean, that's that's another bone to pick on. Okay, so getting back to the heart, the brain is in the heart. This is the thing about the heart chakra I want you to get tonight. And I said that um, the mind is a robot. It has no feelings. The heart develops uh, our riches, every human emotion, good and bad. All right, that we learn about in each incarnation. Um, at its finest, the heart and the emotional intelligence. And, you know, finally, <laughs> they even a patriarchy admits, you know, there is such a thing as emotional intelligence. Yeah, I'm one of the smartest people around because I listen to my emotions. I, I don't try and counteract them. I don't try to throw them out because, you know, it's like a little intuition or a little voice coming in. no. Chase it down. Find out what it wants, okay? That gets stronger and stronger the more you do it. So um, that's something that you learn in, in several incarnations, maybe 10 or 15, who knows, maybe 100. But I said kindness, con you know, compassion, generosity, support of self and others, creativity, intuition are just some of the riches, Um you know, that we are going to embark upon because, like I said before, the heart is our door to our spirituality, period. And how much does that mean to some of you? I know homeopaths, I know a lot of homeopaths, not all of them, but there's a goodly amount of them who are deeply, deeply spiritual, okay? I mean, there are things driving them spiritually and everything they do. We want that. That That's a better human being. And it all starts with the heart. So let's move on here. Okay. I said, and once the lower mental body or heart field allows itself to tippy toe over into the watery emotional heart, it will find a welcome and it will be loved and regardless of what science is. And I said socially, and this is for the men, not the women. Um, the men have really gotten dinged down here too by the patriarchy it isn't just the women i said men are taught not to cry not to show their emotions or um 
and and then it becomes what I call or and what society is now calling toxic masculinity. I said, that is a societal and created lie made up by male patriarchy. And I said, energy-wise, the man has the same way to reach his feelings and emotions and intuition via his heart chakra associated with that particular field. If he would only do the head heart every morning, it's going to help these men get out of this, this entrapment that they feel like they're in. And, and they are. Energetically, they can sure feel it. But nobody's giving them an out. Nobody's giving them a way to help open that door and escape and, and find out how, how much being a human is better than, than what the patriarchy gave you. Okay? And I said, uh, men are particularly trapped uh, by the heart, which is, you know, right brain dominant in women. Uh, men are left brain. And I said, science and mental pursuits were king of all things. Uh, that only it could rule and have wisdom. But the Queen of Hearts disagreed with that lopsided, imbalanced socialization males were unfairly branded with. And I said, she knows we all need to be loved, nurtured, protected, and supported. I said, the mind can't do it at all. I said, but the emotions sure can. And I said, and as we move from the mind is king into the age of Aquarius, this particular societal disease that has harmed both genders will start to dissolve once and for all, and it can't be too soon. Uh, I said, the heart is primary, the mind is nothing more than a servant. Love and peace over hate and war. Take your pick. Okay, so the throat chakra, this is right here, all right? And you can literally hold your two hands about three to four inches, three inches away, and you can move them up like this, and then you can move them down slowly and push your hands out and then flick, flick your hands because you, you, you've pulled a bunch of what I call dust bunnies, which is positive ions, out of your aura, which is good, okay? But you can literally feel that heart chakra if it's working. Uh, it's it's one of the easiest areas to to work with, and it is, you know... It is a spiritual gateway, literally. Uh, once you've decided that you you want to become a better person in the heart chakra, the real test for learning about spirituality is in the throat chakra. It is a blue color. And uh, it is also uh, these, these chakras, the heart, the throat, the brow chakra, okay, are connected to the, the crown. And they all work together in concert to help us in a spiritual way to become better uh, people. And hopefully, uh, as we do, we're going to get more and more metaphysically opened as, as a result of that. Now, there's lots of tools in the right. And it doesn't say that everybody's going to be doing the same thing. It's whatever you need for this incarnation. In my case, uh, mine was clairvoyance, uh, but I don't do a lot of other things that other people do. I mean, for instance, psychometry. Psychometry means you can hold anything in, in your left hand, okay, because this is the energy coming in, and this is the energy going out in the right. Hold it in your left hand, and a person who has psychometry abilities, which is, again, metaphysical, they can literally see like a... Uh, a movie screen across their head and they can see everything that this thing is and what has happened to it, what the age of it is and what is its importance or what is its value or what does it do? Now that's psychometry. I'm dead on arrival on that one. I can't do it. It's just not my thing. And so you'll find as you get into the throat chakra that you're going to start defining what interests you. Okay. And, and this is where people like Barbara Brennan, who wrote the book Hands of Light, um, she's working out, her, you can bet she's working out of her throat chakra and her brow chakra and her crown chakra because she's wide open and she can see everything that I described earlier about the Catheric template and the crown chakra, how you see this, this other dynamic part of us that it helps keep our human body from, from dying. 
So anyway, I said, this is the throat chakra. It moves a blue color through it. And I said, it's connected to the catheric uh, energy spinal column. And that's that gold anatomy I was talking about earlier. And it is concerned with a human uh, either remaining a, a lower human, which means they're working primarily out of the root chakra, the sacral or navel chakra, or the solar plexus. And they don't go any further than that. They just stay there. Or they're striving to grow and mature mentally as well as emotionally. And so they they have started working in their heart and then they're in alignment with their heart. And then they go to the gate of the throat chakra to begin to live a life where one's maturity and spirit are of equal importance while living in our 3D environment. And this is why many, many metaphysical people never tell anybody <laughs> what they see, what they hear, what they know, uh, what they can do, they never do. Because everybody will say, oh, she's crazy. Put her in the, put her in the middle home. Just drug her up. You know, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Uh, and so that's why most of them don't come out, you know, to, to say anything. But we're in the age of Aquarius now, and it's time. Okay, so the throat chakra number two, I said, this field is only concerned with you making a commitment to yourself to become a better human being than you ever have before. And I said, it's like there are two roads. See, the throat chakra is two roads. Don't ever forget this because you're going to be tested on it. Not by me. You're going to be tested on it in incarnations, many incarnations. I said, uh, do you take the low road 3D or do you take the high road, which is 4D plus? And I said, there is an awful lot of one's willpower involved in this back and forth process. Remember, our will are the rear chakras. Our desire is our front chakras. Our desire can actually help us go down the wrong road. You better be listening to what is really, really, really important to you and stick with it as best as you can. And I said, do you want to be all you can be or not? And this is the first inkling of vision. Uh, people who are working out of their throat chakra are often visionaries or they they see things that other people don't. And uh, I'm, I'm not talking about your two physical eyes and not even your third eye. This is about what your soul wants you to always improve upon yourself and become your better, best self over incarnations. Because once you have hit that throat gate, all bets are off. And you leave all of the immaturity and the whininess and the griping and wanting power and money and control over other people. That's left behind. Now you're on a path to an incredible opening up of your spirit. And, and it's all heart-centered, period. It has nothing to do with the mind. And I said, if your desire slash will get into alignment, which is what we want. I said, you may end up in an ashram, uh, practicing yoga or meditation, uh, following your own intuition and your heart energy, and you find yourself opening up much like a bud on a lotus flower beneath the heart's healing light of the cosmos. And I am not joking on this one. Uh, once you make that commitment, there are some incredible things that are going to come your way. And I said, it's always a struggle between the earthly riches and spiritual richness. And I said, if you take the spiritual route, you will find that as your spirit is enriched energy wise, okay, that's your aura and that's your chakras, that synchronistic events will occur in your life as a result. You get rewarded in a sense, to take the higher road of the heart, which is primary in any spiritual development. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If they do, walk away from them. If you settle for a 3D life, however, bummer, uh, involving the lower chakras, then you will be like the businessman in this graphic <laughs> that I show you that is running and stressed out in the name of money, power, and control. And I said, the lower mind that refuses to budge from its material world and existence, which are you going to choose? Okay, the causal field, the brow chakra. This is a biggie. This is our third eye. 
It's a sixth field, and uh, it's also known as the karmic field or body. And by karma, it doesn't mean that the plan that you put into place uh, before you incarnated into this 3D world to learn what you have to put into motion. That's the karma. It doesn't mean you did something wrong. It just simply means that's what you're putting into motion. And it isn't all uh, roses and flowers, folks. I mean, ask anybody who lives down here. They're going to die laughing over that one. It's hard. It's hard, hard work. And I says, a soul learns by living in 3D and making a whole lot of mistakes. Every day I make a mistake or more. And I said, in this case, karma does not necessarily mean you're going to pay for something that you said or did to someone else or harm them in some way. I said, instead, it is a plan that you wanted to learn and you came into this lifetime uh, and mapped it out for you to follow that path. So you got nobody to blame. What, whatever has happened to you, you set that plan in motion. That's not karma. That was your educational process that you came in to learn from. And we all get tasked with the same thing. I don't care how spiritual or not you are. It doesn't matter. And I said, um, this template of energy is created within your causal field. And this is, this is the brow chakra here, your third eye. And I said, as you birth and are surrounded by your aura, this template is fully activated energy-wise. And it will take on your plans, energy, and ensure that is the path you will walk in this given lifetime. That's pretty cool. And I said, the brow chakra moves in lavender, but I, I have seen brow chakras that are purple and I've seen them indigo colored. And indigo to me is, is the highest uh, spiritual level of the, of the brow chakra from, from what I can tell. And I said, uh, it's aligned with this particular field. It's also known as the third eye and the center of your forehead where clairvoyance occurs. I said, you can see into the other dimensions as well as the spirits and the people who live in them. Now, you know, this sounds really high powered. I know a lot of people think this, wow, this would be really cool. No, it isn't. Once they know that you can hear or see them, okay, they come in droves, they'll, they will encircle you and they'll want to talk to you and you got to tell them no. You know, you you don't need that that kind of interference because that's that is going to pull you away from your focus of what your incarnation was. So while it's fine to be clairvoyant, you've got to be picky about what you do with it. <laughs> I mean, in some really crazy ways. Um, this is a high powered metaphysical ability uh, that is part of of this the brow chakra's uh, skill set. It's about the clarity of knowing who you are, that you know right from wrong, that you can delineate between people still stuck in 3D, remember the lower three chakras, uh, and grow spiritually and develop the other set of tools instead stored in the right hemisphere of everyone's brain. It's up to you, all right? Nobody can force you to do this. This is a God I want to. You literally can go from living a 50% life to 100% life at this gate or portal, which is the brow chakra. And I said that the metaphysical energy that will become available to you over time. Normally, uh, it's better that you don't blow what we call blow open. When you blow open a chakra and it's wide open and, and it's spinning, it's usually spinning too fast because it needs to slow down. But at first it's too fast uh, because it's going online. This, you want to make sure, opens up slowly rather than just, it's everything and because it scares people, um, you know, and others will say, oh, they're schizophrenic because they see people and they hear people. This, this is a real contentious thing with me um, because I've, I've seen schizophrenics and, and I've seen how their energy moves. Now, I don't, I don't know all of them and I haven't had every experience possible imaginable. But what I have seen is, is that about half of the schizophrenic people that are diagnosed 
their bra chakra blew open. It had nothing to do with a wound or a, a DNA genetic abnormality. Okay. But see, doctors down here can't tell you the difference. I see the difference. And shamanically, we can help some schizophrenics that are, are in that particular uh, mode or modus operandi. And sometimes we can't because it's their incarnation and they wanted to know what it was like to be like that. Well, if that's what you came in for, there's nothing we can do for you because, you know, it was your life. And one of the, th one of the shamanic cosmic laws is you don't, you don't ever stop a person on their path ever. You get the hell out of the way. And, and you bless them and wish wish the best for them because that's a hard life. Anyway, the third eye is symbolic as it is unseen in 3D, although it can be seen in 4D plus by another clairvoyant. And I said at this level, it is having the ability to look honestly at ourselves, to know our weaknesses because we still have them, okay? And we have to know our strengths. And you have to know where our wounds are at and start working on them instead of running away from them, repressing them or suppressing them and healing them and yourself. And I said, you will just, you will be able to discern lies, con men, frauds from any truth. And I said, and if you don't know it, you sense it intuitively. And it is enough to make you not get involved with these types of 3D people who don't have your best vested interests in their heart at all for you. And I said, these people live in a world of Maya. And Maya simply means it's your hall of mirrors. All right. That's what Maya is. Uh, and their lies. And I said, you are desiring to live instead if you're following a, a healthy path uh, with your brow chakra. You're in a world of truth. You don't lie. You tell the truth. Even, even though it hurts, you tell the truth. Okay, so the brow also has another wonderful skill set in it. And I said, you have a great deal of intelligence at this level. And again, the intelligence is wrapped up in the emotions, and the emotions have the overriding primary energy of it, okay? But this type, this is the type of intelligence I'm talking about. Geniuses blossom at this level. And I said, others are visionaries who see things differently, and can develop ideas into something meaningful that might help Earth and her inhabitants. We need these people desperately. And I said, creativity abounds within you. So use it to help others and lift the energy into something positive for all beings. Now, you find a lot of, of uh, brow chakra and throat chakra people who are speakers, teachers, uh, writers, um, Podcasters, <laughs> uh, they're into film, cinema, documentaries, photography, AI, because they're all spreading the word about some topic uh, that falls into the throat chakra type person's career. And I said they spread the word. It's about something to a global world that awaits what they see and know. And I said I call them cosmic teachers to the rest of us. And you'll know one when you see one. I mean, it's, you know, they just stand out. And whatever they have to say, it it makes so much sense to you. And it's just, it, it's nice to be around those people <laughs> versus the other type. Oh. So the causal field of brow chakra continuing, I said, opening up to the metaphysical realm of our life means embracing it or running away from it. And I've seen an equal amount on both. I said, people get jangled if things uh, they see things that aren't there. And I said, what is really happening is their third eye is opening and they can can easily see into the other dimensions. It's a shock. It, it's and, and the thing is, is you have to learn to shut it down, too, so that you, you know, sort of like a horse with putting blinders on. This is 3D. Take them off and you're into 4D. So they have to learn to to handle it and to shut it off when you have 3D things that demand your attention. That's what you have to do. 
There's no, no two ways about it. And I said, it's quite a shock if this happens to you. And if you have no one to educate or train you properly on such shocking moments. And I said, the person gets scared and their emotions take over and they slam that, that eye shut because fear has taken over instead. I said, it may take you several or many lifetimes to approach the other 50% of your life in 3D to turn it into 100% and be able to see or perceive the rest of what is going on around you. I said, it can be very confusing if you don't have a teacher. It, and that is true. But I said, usually, okay, if you're, if you're meant you know, if you were heart-centered and you're sincere, I said, usually there is a synchronistic event that will place you with someone who is already there and they can bring you along, explain what you see because they can already see it too. Okay. They can help validate you. This is so important because you think you think, first of all, a lot of people think they're going crazy, but then if you get that validated going, wow, what's going on here? You know, and you know this other person, you know they wouldn't lie to you because they've never lied before. So why would they lie about this? I mean, you go, this is what happens. This is what happens to everybody. And and it's okay, but don't let the fear stop you. Just kind of hang in there. I had some great teachers, great ones, and they all helped me along. Um, I never questioned like most people, because I was raised in, in a metaphysical environment. But I still had times when I could see them do things that I would think, oh, my God, I'll never be able to do that. And and it's, you know, you're like looking at a miracle happening in front of your eyes. And and so it's it's just, it is a process. It is a process. It takes more than one lifetime, believe me. And I said, uh, uh, if someone is there, they can bring you along and explain what you see or experience so that the fear leaves and it eventually is replaced with a gift you have uh, just awarded yourself with. So that's it. Questions? <laughs> I, I ran through that one. <laughs> I Thanks. hope everybody got something out of it. I hope you're not too confused. No, that's great. Thank you so much, Arlene. I always learned so much when I'm chatting with you and I always end up with even more questions than I had beforehand. <laughs> but well, um, the first, I was just writing some questions down in the chat box as I was going. One of the first um, I was thinking of is just how we can help our chakras, really. We've got, I don't know if you know much about the Narayani remedies. They were created by Swami Narayani in Durban in South Africa, actually. And she helped heal thousands of people there in this um, free clinic. Uh, and she created these, like they, the stories go that she would go into her room and they would be like chanting and all sorts of things are going on. And then she'd come out of the room and there'd be new remedies there. And they're actually such a powerful bunch of remedies that we've had a lot of fun with uh, in our clinic with clients. But she, uh, amongst things, there is a um, range of chakra remedies. Um, so even if you're not familiar with them, it's such, have you ever found homeopathics like helping the chakras or is I've heard that you can eat certain foods or wear certain clothes to help your chakras. But is there anything that you would recommend um, that if we intuitively feel one of our chakras might be struggling that's, or if we've gone to see a healer and they say a particular one's struggling, you know, that we can yep. do to help ourselves? Well, uh, I think that in, in the next time you and I talk, it would be less than five is is uh chakra maintenance okay what i, I should have known that <laughs> well you i mean you i should have known you'd head, go there you know? yeah. i mean you're not clairvoyant for for a reason you know i mean <laughs> you really are clairvoyant <laughs> anyway um there's there's many roads to rome eugenia okay and what works for one person doesn't work for another um uh the the acupuncturist uh, gentleman from Sedona who took care of my mom and helped get her whole cardiovascular system up and running again and gave her 10 more years of her life just with acupuncture. Mm. I've seen, I mean, I, I talked to him quite a bit. I love talking to him. He was, he's, he's just an incredibly spiritual, deeply spiritual person. Um, and, and I asked her, I says, well, do you ever have people come in and, and they don't, 
they don't respond to to acupuncture. He says, oh, yeah. He says, yeah. I said, well, what? I said, how do, how do you feel about that? He says, they're not ready to heal. He said, and and he says, and, and he wanted to make sure that I understood that it wasn't a judgment on his part, okay? It's simply what he saw and and what he felt and and he had done he's done acupuncture for 40 years i mean uh, and training over in china for 5 years you know before that and he he just said they simply aren't ready for it and i said well is is there any other thing that they could do and he said yeah he said he said there's there's lots of ways to uh to help a person, but he says they have to be shown or they have to be led, or there has to be a synchronistic event that's going to help them to get there. And, um, in, you know, in, in, because my father was native American, my mother was an herbalist. She would make certain remedies because she was a hands-on healer. Okay. Uh, she, she made, I think it was three different salves. One, one was, uh, sage, um, and the other was sweet grass, and then there was third, and I can't remember what it is. But what she would do, and I, I saw her do this many times, and she would always give them a tin to take home with them, like a four ounce tin of of the salve that she had made, uh, like the sage. The sage uh, basically has a lot of what we call negative ions in it, which is good. The way the way you can um, marry these two things is, is that how do you feel when you're around a body of water? How do you feel when you're around the ocean? Mm. You always feel uplifted. You always feel cleaner. You always just feel like all of the weight that you're carrying is gone. It just magically disappears. Okay. That's what sweet grass does for us, but it's a native American thing. And maybe not everybody, um, is happy having a native American ways, but my mom would know she would be looking in their front and back for what was stuck, what wasn't working. If a chakra is closed, there's many times in a lifetime where a chakra will be closed and, and it's off limits to the person. Okay. Because they're simply not ready for it. And usually it's the upper ones that are closed, but the lower three are almost always open. But, uh, she would she would use the sage salve and just you know put it on the the front or the back wherever there was I called it sludge but she didn't uh, <clears throat> that was slowing down the chakra okay and with positive ions positive ions are like dust bunnies okay you know when you you take a you dust your house and stuff like that that's that's positive ions. Sage, our sacred sage, no matter where you live in in North America, there's sage, okay? And whatever the sage is for that area, that's sacred to that Native American nation. And they would make a sage uh, salve out of it and rub it, okay? And, and they would rub it, if it was in the Northern Hemisphere, they would rub it clockwise on it very gently and then give the person the the tin of sap to take home with them because it has negative ions in it and it and it literally will pull out the dross and the stuff the the blockages that are stuffed in there and then the chakra can begin to turn and go faster and faster and faster. My mom was usually see them in two weeks, you know, because that's usually what a tin lasted. And they would be so much better because of it. But, you know, if you're not of a Native American mindset, um, it, there's got to be something else out there for you uh, in, another, in another form. And that's why I love homeopathy. There, you don't have the... the the guardrails that you get, you know, if you're Native American, you you use certain things, okay? And, you know, African people have their, their own means and ways of doing things, and it works for them, okay? But homeopathy, just in my personal opinion and experience, uh, can do all of that, and that, you know, taking the correct remedy will open up that chakra that has too many positive ions in it and starts cleaning it out and gets it to work. I've seen that time and time again. 
And, and again, it's the well-chosen remedy. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a lot of different ways uh, that people can use things. And I, and I know, I don't know, I've had people ask me this, is there a special homeopathic remedy for a chakra? Okay. Uh, there probably is, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> cool. And, and even then with my knowledge about chakras being what they are, which is, I limp along because I'm not a hands-on healer and a hands-on healer knows them super well. I don't because I'm a shaman. It's just a very different path. I know enough to be dangerous, but I also know enough to to be honest about it, um, that it just depends upon the person. And if it's time for that chakra to be opened up or to be healed or to be replaced. Now, I have helped. I've seen my surgical team of spirit guides totally remove a set of chakras from a person's template and and put in a new one. Uh, the first time that happened, my mouth dropped open. And I said, how can they do that? And they did it. And they knew how to do it because they're trained up to do it. I just watched. My mouth was still open. But they, they put in an entirely new uh, set of chakras in that person's template to help them because... In their incarnation, they weren't supposed to have that happen, but it did because somebody made a mistake and had a bad car accident, and there it went. Okay, you, you destroyed, you know, uh, one of your chakras, and uh, and so they'll replace them. There's that too, and it's like a miracle. So there's just, you know, I have different ways. And I'll talk about a lot of them uh, next time so that people can try them. But I, I do recommend everybody get a pendulum, okay? And get a small book on a pendulum. There's not one I particularly recommend. Maybe you can, Eugenie, um, to, that teaches you how to use it and, and everything. But I'm telling you this straight up. If you do not ground yourself, you're not going to get uh, real-time actual information that's going to help you okay it won't work it will not work so that grounding is just you know the basis of everything so does uh, that answer your question it, it does <laughs> it does i have um just was going to ask you see the animals and plants obviously have uh auras as well and I th actually think you said that you say they have chakras as well. They do. Yeah, and, absolutely. Just like us. Yeah. And, um, but the same, the same amount of levels or the, do they have less or more? Uh, no, they're, you know, they're not, they have less than we do because we're on a different path than they are. Um, and every path is different, but usually there's three or four chakras depending I see more on trees. I see less on, on flowers and bushes. Um, and gosh, you know, the rocks are so old. They're, they're billions of years old in some cases. Um, but they might have two or three chakras. It just depends. And, you know, and everything is different. Mm -hmm. But they all are surviving. They're all living. I mean, I talk to rocks all the time. And I'm <laughs> yeah, there's a good one that could put me into the mental home. Oh, I talked to rocks. Yeah, they talked back to me. You want to know what they said? No. <laughs> rocks have taught me a lot, believe me. They're mm -hmm. they're amazing. And uh and and they're big time healers. Uh one of the things that I, I'm gonna be talking about is quartz crystal. Uh, just an amazing healing tool. Just so cool. I was thinking about the other day. Um, I, I, I maybe I have too much empathy. I don't know. But as a child, you know, I was that kid that always felt sorry for my toys if I gave one toy a bit more attention than the other toy, or I wasn't able to talk to them enough that day, or all that sort of stuff. But um, same with my crystals. You know, I've got this gorgeous amethyst sitting here next to me, but. Um, I've wanted to use it with the healing in my clinic, just even just sitting there. But I feel sorry for the crystal taking on all those people's healing. Or actually, I've got a huge shungite, and sometimes I'll just sit there if I'm trying to just, you know, get some of the EMFs of the day off, and I'll just sit there with my shungite. But then I'll feel sorry that this poor shungite is taking on all my EMFs and all my, my shit of the day. 
<laughs> yeah, but that the show guide's whole uh, path in life is is to remove dangerous energies around human beings. That's their job. Okay. And, and they knew that going in, and they're very good at it, and they do transmute it. It's just like, you know, when the prana comes into the chakra, and then as it moves through, it goes eventually to one of the endocrine glands where the prana is actually transmuted into a hormone. Okay. That makes sense. I That's... mean, so um, the shoe guide isn't hurt at all. Okay. Um, but what I do with my shoe guide is, is I put it out in the sunlight for an hour or two, you know, I'll put it up on the railing um, in the back of the house where the dog can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> She's a retriever, a golden retriever. So, you know, she wants to retrieve everything. Oh, there's a shoe guy bracelet. Blah. You know, <laughs> and she'll go running around with it, prancing, going, look what I got. Look what I got. She won't chew it. She won't eat it, but she retrieved it. But um, sunlight is so good for everything. All mm -hmm. right. With the exception of some, some stones. But I don't want to get into that tonight. Um, but the, uh, the shoe guy can re-energize itself with sunlight and moonlight as all stones can mm -hmm. there is you know uh some of them you don't for instance like that amethyst of yours mm -hmm. don't ever put it into direct sunlight uh -huh. it will fade the purple away to quartz crystal translucence and you will lose the purple oh that's interesting right? mm -hmm. yeah Always, always keep uh, your amethyst uh, in in a pouch. Okay, keep it away from sunlight. Don't wear it out in sunlight. Uh, and moonlight, I you know, with my amethyst, I I put it on the windowsill when I have a full moon, where it's coming in, and I'll let them let them lay there, and they enjoy it, and it's not taking their color away from them. That's interesting. So some stones you don't want to put in sunlight, and amethyst is one of them. Also with amethyst, you want to be very careful that you're not bringing it in, in an ADD or an ADHD child uh, around amethyst because it really discombobulates them. The energy of that is the brow chakra, okay, for the amethyst. It's purple. You've got This is the first thing I want you guys to start making connections with is Okay, it's purple. That means the brow chakra is going to be stimulated by it, okay? And it's true. But children who have ADD and ADHD are in a mental quandary and, and maelstrom anyway. And if they get around something purple, like that amethyst, because amethyst is very powerful. It's quartz crystal. It's, you know, it's it's just loaded energy-wise far more than most, most stones or gemstones. So they just they just go bonkers mm -hmm. and uh and if you try and sleep with an amethyst at night and you're like that you're tossed and turning you'll never go to sleep so you really want to be careful with that and you want to be careful around kids that are on ritalin and things like that uh they don't do well with amethyst at all all right so it's just you know i i have a youtube channel that i've devoted it's called uh, jim mistake um, uh, because I know a lot about the stones and I have a degree in it. And, um, I, I wanted to put, start putting some information out there on it that you can use. And the first one that I, I did was Emerald. I'm, I'm late. I have to do Ruby next. I haven't <laughs> gotten to it. <laughs> That's next up on my plate. But, um, you know, because I trained in with Oshina for, for, three years off and on on gemstones and quartz crystals she she was just a, a, an incredible miraculous wonderful you know brow and crown chakra teacher she just knew it all and and was incredible and she passed on what she knew which i think is very very important it helps the rest of us um but she she would tell all kinds of stories about these stones and which ones you should or shouldn't do this or that. Like for instance, you, you know you don't want to to use azurite, which is a copper copper mine stone, and it's blue and it looks very beautiful and and scintillates and and looks very very pretty. 
but it is so highly poisonous if you put that in water. Um, I, I remember putting my goldfish, uh, somebody gave us an Asia right and we didn't know it. And I think I was only five years old at the time. And I put it into the, the water of, of this little fish aquarium we had and it killed the fish. I cried. I, oh. I just felt so horrible. And But I didn't know at that time that Asia right has copper poisoning in it because it comes from a copper mine. And you also have to be careful with malachite. Um, it's, it is also a copper mine stone too. And you have to, uh, you know, think about these things. Although I will say for malachite, it's very good for people who have rheumatoid arthritis uh, in particular to wear a small stone in their left pocket because it's going to pull the energy of the, the stone into, into their entire aura, okay? Mm -hmm. and, it, and it begins to circulate uh, because copper, they have found, is helped, helps rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis. It actually helps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and if people like stones, then they should look at a stone remedy if, if they're sick. If if you believe in, in and want to use flower essences, which I do, uh, I use flower essences on animals and humans, but I also use homeopathic remedies too. But, um, you know, whatever you like, whatever you love, these are tools that you can use to help yourself and your family. And that's where it's all at. That's that's where you want to start is at home. I have got the crystal. There's this book called The Crystal Bible, and I've got it next to the toilet at the moment. It's my toilet reading. <laughs> my husband's always it's like, It's the most important place in the house for reading. <laughs> it, is, it really is. <laughs> And um, <laughs> so in this book, I was just started reading volume two last night and it had, it said in there that there's all these new crystals. It was necessary to create the second volume because it's massive anyway, the second volume, because all these new crystals are coming to light now for various reasons. It's easier to get uh, Russia's opening up uh, trade a bit more and people are being able to access those. China's allowing people to access more of their crystals. But one of the others was with the, um, I think they said with the with the ice caps melting and things like that, they're able to access stones that they couldn't previously access because it was right. covered right. Uh, by right. ice. And I couldn't help but wonder if it's actually that you know it's the coming into the age of Aquarius and these stones are now ready to actually come to light because then also. I was editing some clips last night of my interview with Peter Tamanello, who you'll know is you know the the king of the gemstones in the homeopathic world, but um, he was talking about in 2000 one of the crystals uh i think it was green jade said to him that it's now time for this remedy the, the remedy made from this crystal to be introduced to the world so i do think with crystals they you know reveal themselves at a time when it's ready so i couldn't then help but when i read this of the ice melting and the crystals now being revealed under these layers of ice that weren't previously known about that probably also because it's time for them to come out but I guess this is, we're right. going into a whole other conversation, but I'm finding myself more and more drawn to, um, to crystals. And I would love to learn more about it. In addition to the shark grass and all these things, I've previously kind of just skirted around it, but I really feel that this is something that can give us a deeper understanding yeah. of how we can help our clients. I actually had one person in my Facebook group say to me, please don't talk about these things. It's not homeopathy related. And I didn't even reply to that comment. Um, because I well, really... it's energy too. Exactly, and, and, <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you believe and... in homeopathy, you believe in energy. Period. I exactly. mean, there's no, no boundaries on this. Okay. <laughs> but also, there was no judgment. I just realized that that person was probably not at the space where they're ready for it, and I recognize it because I've been there myself in the past too. So there's no judgment. Right. It's just kind of recognizing the fact that we're all at, at different stages, and it's not good or bad, like you said. It's just different. Um, yeah. But uh, already, when you were saying, you just quickly mentioned something about picky eaters and it made me think of what practically can we do in the clinic to strengthen that i think you said it was the sacral chakra so if you've got a really pick a picky eater which well, it's, is, it's a solar plexus so solar so, plexus, solar so, plexus. Oh, the sacral oh. is your abdomen area top oh. and bottom above and below the umbilical cord because i have loads of 
clients with autism who are obviously very picky eaters. They're just on the carbs all day long, you know, the crackers and the things. And it really is an obstacle to cure because unless you can get them to eat a variety of foods, they're not going to get that nutrition. And often they don't want to take right. supplements anyway. So what other ways, what else can we do to help them get nutrition? And I often give them the Narayani nutrition remedy. I obviously try and focus on, you know, healing the gut as much as possible. Sometimes I'll get a stool sample done yeah, so I can see important. what they're what their bowel flora is like. It will tell you, you know, what variety of flora there is. And then maybe we can give a homeopathic remedy made from that particular flora that they're missing. But then also, this is just another layer for me to consider is if they're a picky eater, then it is the um, uh, solar plexus chakra that needs to be strengthened. So can I then get them to wear a certain color, which I know is tricky with children with autism anyway, but can we uh, expose them to these colors somehow? Can we, you know, what sort of things can we do to heal that chakra to then also help with the picky eating. So this is why the homeopaths who are listening that are maybe thinking this isn't related. We need to try and use all the well, tools yeah, that we is, possibly can to do, as, to do as much as we possibly can to help our clients. Right. Well, the first thing I would say is, is, you know, if, if that type of, of child or adult, because they do go into adulthood, um, I would, just lay them down on, ask if they are comfortable laying down on, on your table and, you know, pull out the pendulum and let them look at it and feel it and touch it. And then just put it over the stomach, you know, hold it about uh, four inches above the stomach and see what it does. If it does nothing, that means it's closed, which is why they've got the nutrition issues that they've got. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, and you have to to look at everything else regarding that. And, you know, I know that they don't eat right. I, I've seen this time and time again. And I don't think we should stop um, trying to find something. But I would probably... Um, I would probably look at yellow citrine. Um, it's one of the quartz crystal family. Okay. Just a, a small, and you can use a tumbled stone. You don't have mm. to buy a, an expensive six sided quartz crystal. In fact, most, most citrine are little tiny things anyway. And, and to get one that is six sided and, and even this tall, okay. Which isn't that tall. That is phenomenal because most of them don't grow like that. They grow in all these tiny little communities uh, and that's it. But if you can get a, um, you know, a, a tumbled stone and just put it in their left pocket and let them carry it around with them during the day. All right. Uh, just tell them it, it's a friend. I know I, I deal with a lot of kids and um, I, you know, I just tell them that this is their, this, this is a little friend. His, his name is, you know, uh, do you know its name? And kids are so open and so receptive. And they'll say, oh, that's Ellen. That's, that's Ellen. I recognize her. Okay. Well, you're going to put Ellen in your left pocket because she loves to walk around with you and let that energy start circulating through the aura. Okay. This takes some time. It It isn't a miracle worker usually in a day or two. All right. But if it's a child, a child's more than likely because it's a gift and it's pretty. And I always have a little pouch, you know, a uh, uh, fabric pouch, uh, colorful type of fabric and put the stone in there. And they, they think that that is the best thing in the world. I mean, it's such a gift to them. Mm -hmm. And I just say, be sure and wear it in your left pocket. Okay. And we'll see you in another two weeks or three weeks. And, you know, we'll see how you're doing. That's, you know, because kids and, and even kids who are, who are not mentally as well developed, giving them a gift like that is, is first of all, it's kind it's gentle and it's it's sincere uh, from you to to the child, and children are so open. And I don't I don't care whether they're mentally all here or not. They are so open. Mm -hmm. They're hearts. They're all heart, mm -hmm. and it's so easy to talk to them. And so uh, right now, I I have um, a person. It's not a child. It's it's a older person, uh, a woman. 
And I sent her um, one of my tins of sage because she she is not Native American. She's Caucasian, but she has always believed deeply in Native American healing. And uh, she was having a lot of uh, a lot of belching, heartburn, this type of thing. And I, and I told her, I said, just, you know, uh, put it on, you know, before you go to bed at night, I said, now it's, it, you know, when you make a salve, it's, it's made out of, uh, the comb of the honeybee. Okay. It's a, it's a wax. It's not a grease. There's a difference. And, and so you just need a little bit of that and just, you know, rub it over, over the area and see what it does for you. And within five days, she came back and, you know, said, it's all gone. You know, I don't have the, the burning in there anymore. It's just, and, and all the sage did, uh, the salve was, was clean out the chakra so it could start working again, or it start mm -hmm. at least moving faster than what it was so that the digestion could be, you know, brought up to speed more than it was, which is why, you know, the, the esophagus, that little valve that's there isn't shutting like it should. And, and that also has something to do with it. It can be a weak valve, a flap, weak flap. And I've seen Sage do that. But this, again, these are people who believe in that path and it works for them and that's what will heal them. And so, I mean, whatever you have down there in Australia, I, I know you have a lot of beautiful flower remedies by different flower essence companies. Um, you know, there's got to be something down there. And maybe maybe what you need to do is widen your scope or whatever. Or just tell your, your chief guide, look, bring somebody in who can help me on this you know get i and i need it from australia i need it from where i live because you know there's an old saying in the united states that wherever you live everything you need to keep yourself healthy is right around you within a, a five mile radius okay and i find that to be true mm -hmm. because in every place there are different herbs different flowers you know, uh, that, that can help us and mm. different stones. There's different stones and different types of, you know, I mean, is it a metamorphic area? Is it basalt? Uh, is it sedimentary? You know, we could go on and on all night. I could tell you lots of stories about that. Maybe you just aren't living in the right area. <laughs> I mean, there's that too. You know, if you're a water person, you love the sedimentary areas. And if you can't live by the water, at least you want to be where the sedimentary uh, was because it meant that it was under the ocean. Mm -hmm. And then it uplifted after millions of years. Mm -hmm. But that energy is still there. See, this is the thing. This is why I wrote Walking the Land is where you live is important and and it starts with the geology of it and then it starts with well do you have an aquifer under you or do you have a river or do you have a stream under you that you don't know about uh which way is it running is it running under your house oh you say you can't sleep well okay but you've already built a house over it because you didn't know any better Nobody taught you this. They knew this in, in the United States back in the 16 and 1700s and the 1800s. They had dowsers, okay, who would douse with, with a pair of sticks. You know, it's a Y-shaped stick. Mm -hmm. And they would hold both ends of that. And that, that little front of it would go like this or like this where the water was at. And, and, and so they knew not to build over underground uh, water areas and they were right but everybody's forgotten that and so now they build over everything mm -hmm. and it's no wonder some people can't sleep in different rooms but it's because of that so you know look at what you got in your own backyard take a look at this eugenia i mean i know you're you you're on roller skates 90 percent of the time but <laughs> um just Someday, just go out and just look around. And do you have somebody who's a master herbalist or an herbalist in your area? I can definitely find somebody. I actually have a somebody who is a um, whose family does a lot of 
work with Aboriginal herbs and things like that. And we are having a meeting very soon after you mentioned to me to get in touch with somebody local. And I was like, well, actually, I've got this client. Yeah. And so I'm really excited to meet up with her and learn more about. Good. Aboriginal yeah, because people. your Indigenous people know uh, what plants, what rocks, what water, everything, or where to sit or where not to be sitting. Uh, they know all those things. Mm. And, and they all contribute to your health and welfare, or it takes it apart. If you happen to have your house under the in the wrong place at the wrong time, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you are, but you know i've I've run into this so often it's it's not even funny. Mm -hmm. walking the land definitely tells you what to be looking for and and if you're building a house, then you definitely want that book because it's going to tell you how not to build in the wrong place because you live in it. And, and I've had people get really sick after they build a house someplace and they've built it over a negative uh, energy line, which is where the, the discarnates use it as a highway to get from point A to point B. You, you just don't really want that energy and you don't want them coming through your house. Mm. It's like a bus station. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I've. I read um, your book, Path of the Mystic. So just for our listeners, even though Eileen writes under pseudonyms, if you just type in uh, Eileen Norman in uh, Amazon, your Lindsay McKenna books come up as well, which is great. But so I finished reading yeah. your book, Path of the Mystic, which was just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And um, I'm going to do Walking in the Land. I've got I've bought them all on Kindle because some of them I couldn't get the physical copies right. posted over here. So the yeah. next one I'll do uh, Walking the Land. And then I've also got your um, The Soul Retrieval book, which I'll do after that. But the Walking the Land one, I'm really, I can't wait to get into that because, you know, we've got the yeah, 16 it's acres really, here. Really, it's mm -hmm. far more important than anybody realizes. And your health can degrade terribly mm -hmm. if you live in a house in the wrong place over mm -hmm. time. And sometimes it's it's pretty quick, yeah. Uh, depending upon what's yeah. going on energy wise. So you, again, you can't see it, hmm. um, and this is why we need to train people. Uh, just generally speaking, I think metaphysics one hundred and one ought to be taught to every kid Absolutely. starting in first grade. Start hmm. coloring the 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 auras, you know, and, yeah. and color where the chakras are at. Absolutely, imagine yeah. that. We need. To, I wonder if there's a coloring in book like that for children. Your publishing company Not should really. do something like that, Eileen. Get your niece on board and create a children's coloring in book. Exactly. Well, like that. I, it's funny. <laughs> I was thinking along that line the other day that, uh, I mean, my niece does graphics, but I don't know that she wants to do a book or anything like that. I don't think she does. But I was thinking why, I mean, I went over on Amazon and I was looking for a children's book on on what we're talking about and mm. there and there's pieces of it in different things but you've got to be pagan or wicca or mm. native american or god knows what you want to call it and it but it's it, it's disparate it's it's mm. not been brought together like it needs to be mm. my mom used to uh, she would buy me coloring books and i had coloring crayons and she would sit with me and say, and she would show, she'd start a line around the, the body of the figure, okay? And she would say, this is the etheric, okay? And, and she'd always use a great color for it. She says, now, I want you to put that all the way around it. And, of course, I'd go, why, Mommy? <laughs> I want a different color. No. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but that was her way of teaching, mm. you know? And and it wasn't done in school. It was done at home. Mm. And, uh I, I would love to see some some illustrator who we could work with to do something like that. It is so badly needed. Mm -hmm. I just can't believe that somebody hasn't done just energy 101, just mm -hmm. something simple. It You know, I mean, look at this. You know, Sherry did a, a beautiful job on this. Um and, and it reminds me of my days when I was a young kid with color crayons, you know. That's beautiful. <laughs> maybe, thing. maybe we can get some listeners to create some beautiful, um, you know, downloadable coloring in PDFs that you know people can download and just give to their children to color in. And um, yeah, but just that, for the great that's colors. a good idea too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good idea yeah. because you're not hurting the child; you're opening them up. Yeah, and and kids see your aura anyway. They, I mean, five, six years old, they're telling you what colors that they see wow. around a the person. They're totally open. Yeah. Nobody shut them down. 
Yeah. You know, I, and it's like. Eileen, <laughs> I have this one thing that I asked you earlier, but I, I don't think I explained it really well. So when you said that it's uh, the auras are going, sorry, the chakras are going in a clockwise do you mean if you're looking at the person or from their body so for example if i from if their is body my, oh, no, okay, it's so, from, so this is okay that's what i thought i just wanted to double from check your body okay so it'll be a- counterclockwise going okay that makes sense that's right you got <laughs> i assumed it, it was it. but then i was like if you're looking at the person and you're okay i was overthinking it that tends to be my thing that i do anyway <laughs> You need to put your head into your heart, okay? Well, Every you're, once, yeah, but also you've made cool me cool it down. Well, I I am quite ADHD, which I use to my advantage um, because uh. it, there's lots you can do when you when you know a bit more about it. But um, now you've said no, no, about I, this I amethyst, and then I'm like, I've been sleeping with it next to my bed the last couple of nights, and I'm like, oh, maybe I need to move it away a little bit further. <laughs> well, you know, these children who have this are brilliant. They're brilliant minds. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's heavy. not beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I just they, figured they, this, is, this is the nice chatty part. If anybody is still with us after all of this, then they, they yeah. deserve to be part of our <laughs> conversation. There we go. It's a, it's a beautiful go. amethyst. It's it beautiful. Really hey, yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's well, amazing. and keep it close to you because it's a good friend. Yeah, no, it definitely is. And then I'll blur yeah. my background again for those so we don't give people strokes from watching um, the mattress toppers that we have on the walls to be <laughs> sound protection. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, They're looking actually, at you, not the patterns. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I um, I actually love, because our, you know, our, our interviews have been like more, you know, in the two hour range, which is really lovely because normally we, we turn, you know, press the, the stop button at the hour mark and then i often get to have nice chats with the guests which is more kind of candid and informal and just you know the energy of it is different and it's really nice for our listeners who are still hanging out with us right now if they haven't you know if we haven't lost them yet that they get to be part of this lovely candid conversation that it does yeah. it is a little bit different. well yeah and everybody has something of, of value to contribute to and uh, that's why I love teaching my my uh, shamanic students. I would have six or twelve of them in at a time from around the world, sitting sitting on the carpeted floor of, of our living room, wow. and, and being there with them and talking and sharing. And you know, we would go out and do one flower, or we'd do one bush, or something in the southwestern uh, Arizona area. And I I just I learned as much as I gave out of what I knew. And this, that's the way, that's the Aquarian age, you know, and, and that's why we're here and that's why we're doing this. Uh, it's one for all and all for one. And uh, we all have something to contribute. We all have experiences that nobody else has. Mm. And that's what I'm interested in is, you know, what has spurred you forward? What what do you really love to do? And, and are you zeroed in on that and are you doing it like eugenia you definitely are zeroed in there's no question i mean uh you're like a cosmic podcast mother <laughs> i do f- I, 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 it, by the way <laughs> i do thank you i know i feel that but, but it took me so many years like every now and again i start to feel guilty that i am literally living the life that i would love to live in, from a professional point of view. I mean, I have the best family as well. So definitely from a family, my husband and my kids are incredible. Um, and I almost feel guilty because I feel like, oh, you know, that imposter syndrome comes in. I feel like I don't deserve it. But then I just think it took me so many years of finding my passion and, um, you know, the, walking that path. And then I'm like, no, I, I need to do this. And the reality is all of us deserve to do this. All of us deserve to live in our passion and do things that fire us up and light us up. Because um, that's our that's our right, you know. We, but the, yes, it's it a, it's a journey to get there. It's a journey, and yeah, it's not it always easy. <laughs> so I've definitely yeah, never... been through burnout now and again. And you know, you've recently given me some phosphoric acid, which has been an incredible journey. It's just picked me up and helped me so much. I'm just loving it. But now I have to just make sure that I'm not then dipping back in. Now that I have the more energy not then do even more right <laughs> just staying in that balance <laughs> yeah yeah no it, it, it is called walking in harmony what we call walking in harmony you have to know when to quit and you have to know when to give your physical body a rest and your mind a rest and 
there is that. Yeah. That's something you learn along the way. I'm 77, so I can, I, I've been there, done what you've done. <laughs> I, I know from experience. <laughs> So, and a, but, isn't age wonderful? Because I, you know, I'm 44 now, but I'm just loving. I love my 30s, and I'm loving my 40s even more. And I look at my parents-in-law that in their 70s, my mum, and they just, you know, it just there's such a beautiful liberation that comes with that. You don't have to please anybody anymore. You can just, you know, do what right. makes you happy. You don't have to explain yourself or justify yourself to anyone. And I think getting older is such a huge privilege. So I have no issues with telling anybody my age or trying to hide it or anything like that. Like I don't color my hair either, or like it, I'm so every little bit of gray that comes out I'm so excited because it's such a privilege that's given not given to so many people being able to age and get older and wiser and and you know if that's if they don't it's their you know it's their journey as well that you know people that leave us quite young and all that sort of stuff but aging is such a huge privilege it is and women have more to give usually than anybody and uh, that's why I work almost exclusively with women is I, I want to support them. I want to urge them on. I want to coax them. Uh, you know, I want them to be, to be reaching for the stars because everybody can and should be reaching for the stars because the stars talk back to us. There's another, another topic, another time. Um, everybody has a special constellation. Everybody has a special star and and you can start communicating with it and you can get energy from that but it's 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 teaching educational healing energy it's it's nothing bad okay but the more you open yourself up to the world the more the world becomes available to you and energetically speaking and it it supports and holds you and also helps you um bring your dreams to life and to live it not just think about it or feel it or ache for it or wish for it. You know, you, you're, you're walking in your dream. And uh, that's why they call this 3D world Maya. Mm. <laughs> it's a hall of mirrors, but <clears throat> different mirrors can produce a lot of incredible healing and a lot of incredible love and compassion. And that's my whole focus right there is, is helping people. Mm -hmm. And it's such a joy to watch them grow and, and become little flowers that bloom. <laughs> I, they each I have, have their own fragrance. Exactly. I have to say the biggest thing that helped me to um, really live a life of passion and to get to have the, you know, to get to do what I love because there are so many homeopaths. I just heard of another, you know, she's such an incredible homeopath. So, so, so smart. And so, you know, she's actually a doctor in homeopathy as well. And um, she, she's so scared of putting herself out there for so many years. And now it's to the point where I've heard she's not actually going to practice anymore. She's gone into a totally different career. But there's also so many homeopaths that they, you know, if you have a problem, you know, they'll say, oh, come for an appointment, come for an appointment. Whereas my whole thing right from the start is just giving advice away for free, helping as many people for free as I can in Facebook groups and things like that. And you have to be careful of your own energy as well, right? It's an energetic exchange, but helping clients on an acute level. And I was so shocked when I once had a, a homeopath, very well-known homeopath say to me, I don't do those mother's courses, those at-home teaching mother's courses. If they have a problem, they need to come and see me. I'm like, well, I don't want my client to call me at 2 a.m. on a Saturday morning with their child's ear infection. You need to empower that mother. And I've found over the years that the more I give away, the more I empower others. Instead of thinking, oh, it's going to take business away from me. Oh, I can't tell the person this secret or that thing or this a remedy that I use or the way that I do this or that because, you know, it will take business away from me. If you if you go from that scarcity mentality, things just don't flow and it's hard and it just doesn't serve anybody. But if you go from that abundance mentality of, yep, let's help people, let's give away, let's do this for free, let's see how many we can inspire and help, then it really does come back as well. Right, and it does. I mean, uh, a thousandfold it comes back to you. I mean, mm. I, I, I've i lived a life uh, that very few, I mean, most of them would think I was making it up because I am a fiction author <laughs> and New York Times bestselling author. Uh, that I I made it all up, but I didn't. But it was a matter of crawling out of the cellar and and working through my wounds and taking responsibility for them and getting the help and asking for help and getting it 
And um, then that freed me at age 35. So, you know, it, we all go through what I call the gauntlet. Everybody has a gauntlet down here in 3D. Nobody gets away with it. And you either get stuck in it or you die in it or you fight your way through it and you get out the other side of it. And uh, that's what I did. I fought my way through it and I just wasn't going to quit. But not all souls have that kind of resilience. It depends upon how how young or old a soul you are. And the older you are, um, the more you can can deal with things and work through it or help other people work through it because uh, we all become wounded healers and and that's what I am and that's what shamans are. I mean, but there is such an archetype as a wounded healer who is mm. not a shaman. These are people who were terribly wounded uh, in in early childhood, the first 18 years and and they have a you know a terrible road ahead of them to try and heal themselves. But if you'll try, you know, the universe listens and comes to your aid and support and help. I can't tell you how many times <laughs> that I thought it's all over. And no, nope, not really. I mean, it's like, it, keep on going. And there would always be some synchronistic event, some person, some event would happen. Um, and, and they just, it's like it just miraculously comes out of the ethers and goes, bing, and it's right there. You go, oh, okay, all right, I see the road. All right, mm. keep on going, you know. But that's that's what we have to do. And and your older souls can handle that a lot better than a younger soul. Mm. But that's part of living down here in 3D and learning how to live here. Um, and by the time you graduate, boy, that's a good feeling because you don't have to come back here and do that again. Exactly. <laughs> but um, the, there's one there's one thing I want to leave you with, Eugenie. Um, this is uh, this is definitely a, a spiritual thing I'm going to be talking about. There there are a lot of souls down here right now. Uh, for the the change of guard, if you will, mm -hmm. with the energy of this planet, and the souls that have come in, and they started they started back in about the 1930s, okay, and and these are are what we call mission souls. A mission soul is somebody that doesn't have to come back here. They've they've paid their dues. They've they've went through hundreds thousands of lifetimes and. And they've completed that course, okay? That's how it's looked at from the other side. It's like going to school. And a mission soul, first of all, is is a soul that is on some kind of service path uh, where they want to help others. Would probably be the best way to, to say this. Uh, there's many different types of service paths. And they volunteer to come down here. And they plan for it. And they, they plan, you know... Uh, the type of personality that we have to have, where we have to live, the what country, what are we doing in that country? But a mission soul is there to hold the incoming energy and not allow the energy that's leaving to corrupt and crumble it and destroy it before it ever gets in. And this is where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm 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 not a doomsdayer. <laughs> Don't even think that. Um, but we have more mission souls down here in every country of this world that are working from the heart and working as hard as they can, because boy, we are up against an onslaught. I have never seen anything like this. And but I'm glad I'm here. And I wouldn't want to be anywhere else because I like to be where the action's at. <laughs> and you're a mission soul for sure. Okay. Anybody that can spread the word and the word gets out, even if it's to a, a local area, a local radio station or whatever, or maybe regional, maybe, maybe your, your state or your province or whatever. Um, but when they, 
become world famous or or what we call we don't like to call it famous we call it global when you become global which you have become okay this this tells me everything i need to know about who and what you are uh you really didn't have to come back you did though and and you are in the thick of it just like Every every mission soul is in the thick of it now, and the thing is, with a mission soul, they're so they're much older souls, and they know how to ground, and they know how to just stand, stand straight and tall, and they the the wind, the rain, the fire, nothing stops them, and nothing knocks them down, because they've been there, done that so many times in those those incarnations here in three D. Um, but you have to be a pretty selfless, compassionate soul to be a mission soul. It, it's an honor, but it's one of the, it's like being the little Dutch boys. They have the dike and the dike's full of holes and the mission people come along and put their fingers in the hole to stop, <laughs> to stop the water so it doesn't flood and kill everybody. That's what we're in right now, okay? And it's, it's, it was a time when we needed to get the word out to as many people as we could um, about what is really going on and how, how, it can, how you can help yourself and help your family and keep that stability because you can't get tied up with what's going on here. There, there's such a thing as what we call detachment. And detachment in a spiritual sense is, is not... Uh, caring about what happens to anybody. That's not the detachment I'm talking about. The detachment is you love everyone and you do not allow what everyone is doing to each other to harm or kill or murder or torture them or whatever, but you love them anyway. And, and you work with that love. And that is, makes the difference that that's what makes a mission soul who they are um it's it's an incredible time that we live in here now and it only happens once every 21 to 2500 years and here we are we are in the breach of it big time it's an exciting time i'm very excited about it i, I feel very positive about it i know the people i work with are hell on wheels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are not going to give up and they're not going to give in and and they are going to see this new world coming for all of us. And it's going to free everybody from here on out. I, I just can't think of a more important time to be in body than right now. Mm. And I don't know if you've thought about it on that scale. But I, I wanted to kind of share it with you because that's the scale where I live. And 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 I'm aware of these things. And at night, mission souls go out with their astral body. And we are we are in battles. We we are dealing with the darkest of the dark right now. And we are protected and we are not going to get killed. But we're working 24-7, 365 right now. It's balls to the wall, for lack of a better word. That's exactly where we're at. You'll have to do 366 so, this year. We've got a leap year, at Eileen. That's fine. <laughs> Extra days. I don't care how many days. It doesn't matter. Um, but what you're doing, Eugenia, I just really want to praise you and, and uh, just – you're an incredible light to the world. I just want you to know that you don't realize who you are. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and you just keep doing what you're doing. You're, you're in the right path. You're in the glide path. I used to be a pilot. So I flew planes. So you're on the glide path. You're coming in for a landing and that landing is, is going to be huge over the, the coming next six, seven years. And, uh, and we're all going to be better for it because of what you're doing. We're, we're all going to be better people. We're all going to educate each other. Uh, we're going to know a lot more. 
And that always helps. That never hurts us. That always supports us. Mm -hmm. But everybody has good ideas, has experiences. Let's get them out there. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, it's just, I just never want our conversations to end. It's just so beautiful. Thank you so much once again for today. And we're going to chat again next week. And I've got, can't wait to hang okay. out with you again and, and, um, and delve yeah. a bit more of this. I always leave with like another gazillion unanswered questions, but I know if I ask them, I'm going to like keep you for another few, few hours here. And I know it's nighttime there. Oh, it's I'm getting late. <laughs> I'm not going I'll, anywhere. I'll save, it for, always... I'll save it for, for next time, but it's just, yeah, the, the, I, I've just been more and more this idea of, oh, there I go. The question's going to come out, but um, just good good and evil and the yin and yang. And you know how you're talking about the person that murdered. The and evil the, isn't like you can't, win. you can't, but also, but is, but is it really a win? Because we can't have one without the other, right? It's impossible to have one but without the other. But you can have a balance between them and it's mm. so horribly imbalanced. Okay, We've gotcha. have been totally, totally suppressed. You've suppressed <laughs> half, over half the world's energy. Mm. Do you think we're balanced? Okay. I don't. Good point, uh -uh. good point. Good okay point. because oh, the other, no. the other thing is as well like we wouldn't we wouldn't incarnate into this planet if there wasn't work to do anyway so i don't just don't know if there ever that, won't right. be work to do because what's the point of coming down here if we don't have sh shit to do <laughs> that's right oh there's a lot of shit around there's no question about that but it's yeah. it's how we conduct ourselves in it mm. that is really really important and you do not want to get tied up with nuclear war or what are they doing in Syria and Iran or Iraq, you this is where you're detached because you don't want to waste your energy on things that you cannot control. Exactly. Okay, you're not in a pilot seat, you know, in combat dropping bombs. That's mm. a different story. We're not there. Let it go. There. The more we stay open from the heart, the more the energy comes in through us and down into this third dimensional world. Mm. That is okay. so powerful what you're saying, because so many of my clients, are, they, they completely uh, drive themselves mad with things like child trafficking and all that sort of stuff. And I, you know, it's, it is horrifying, right. but unless somebody can tell me what I can physically do about that, I cannot put my energy there. Like I, I just keep no, putting can't. my energy into what it is that I'm doing because I know, you know, there's stuff happening in Gaza and all that. There's all these people posting about them on social media. There's nothing I can do for those people. So I cannot, I can't put my energy there because I, you right. know, and even with COVID, see, like I wasn't. you know better. You know better. You're an old soul. You know that. And we don't. We don't put our energy there. We put it where people who are are hurting or people who are looking for help those are the ones we're going to touch because we have open hearts and mm -hmm. hearts heal they both start with an h <laughs> it's really simple eugenia mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. simple it's not hard to figure out and you just have to be that loving beautiful soul that you are just be the sunlight for someone's darkness and it and the healing will begin automatically because your aura is in their aura and that's where it all begins mm -hmm. that's the catalyst and it doesn't i just want to say this well it doesn't change the empathy for those people like obviously my heart leads oh, for no. all of them and, and, no, no, no. but it's nothing no. i can do about it so i'm not spending my time on social media and the news scrolling through and constantly no. replaying no. those oh. images because there is nothing i can do about that if somebody can tell me what i can do i will go and do that but in the meantime i'm just going to stay on but you're doing it you're doing it right now this is why i wanted to to kind of let you know who you are in what you're doing and how important it is for everyone. All right. That's a trickle down that you have no idea energy wise that's going on because of what you do. It's affecting a lot of people and that's what we want to do, but it's affecting them positively, not negatively. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if they don't want to go along with you and if they don't agree, that's fine. Bless them. Mm -hmm. And, let them let them decide what they want to do but you know what you have to to do okay so just just be who you are 
and you don't have to to apologize to anybody. Okay. Thanks, Eileen. <laughs> yeah. I'm sending you so much love, and I'll chat with you. Well, again I next love week. you too, and I love what you do. And thank you, thank you, so thank you very much for everything you do. You're just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the feeling okay. is so mutual. <laughs> well, let's Just see saying. what we can do together. Let's let's find somebody that can do a coloring book for us. Let's I would do love it. Let's do it. Let's put it out yeah. there. So you take care. All right. And I Bye. love you. Bye. And I love everybody that stayed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye.